So welcome everybody, hey? Just big, 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 big welcome. You're in the right place and you're in a, a really supportive, uh, great community and tribe that is here to share with you some information that's been passed down to all of us, you know, me included. And, uh, and the work that we share here is, uh, is nobody's, it's all of, all of ours, this is our work. And your job is to, to take this information and uh, apply it to your life and create magic. You know, that's, that's what you're here to do, to, to take this amazing knowledge, uh, to apply it to your life uh, and to create magic. And, uh, and that's a, a really great thing. See, the thing about magic is that you don't know how the results are going to, to turn up. And so you do need to go into a place of not knowing. Cool. So welcome. Hey, we're going to have a great time today. And, uh, and I hope that you're all excited uh, about the topic, unplugging from unconscious family contracts to create what you really love with ease. So how many of you think that's a nice, a nice topic? It's, uh, it's really important to understand that all of us start out as a creative energy, okay? And whatever you want to call that creative energy, you want to call it source, you want to, whatever, infinite knowing, whatever it is, um, before you were a you, uh, and as you, you're creating a body, a mind, a, there, is a, there is an intelligence. You might want to call it an intelligence, okay? We, we don't mind what you call it. We're going to call it creative energy today. This creative energy enters the world, enters the world. And, and at some point, this creative energy, this small baby that we all are, realizes that uh, they are no longer connected with their mother and they're an individual. And as they're an individual, they start asking unconsciously, how is it here? So how is it? How do I survive? How do I stay alive? And there's, there's actually four rights. Uh, yes, you should be able to see me. I think everyone can see me. Is it Finalia? Um, uh, Finella? I think you might, it might be on your end. So there are really four rights that the unconscious is after. The first, uh, and these are in no order. The, the first one is uh, they have a right to exist and have their needs met. Right to exist and have needs met. So, you know, as a, as a small child, we, we need our needs met uh, by others. We have a right to exist. We have a right to be here and we have a right to have our needs met. The second thing that the unconscious uh, is looking for is uh, to love and be loved. The unconscious believes has a right uh, to love and be loved. The next right is the right to belong to the family and be separate. So to be connected to the family and, and be separate. So to exist and have needs met, to love and be loved, to belong and be separate. And the last one, to make choices and have their own consequences. To make choices and have consequences. So, you know, that last one is about free will, to make the choice and then have to face the consequences of those choices. You know, we all have the choice to do it, okay? And, and so, as the unconscious is asking how it is, it's, it's looking, at, are my needs met, you know? Am I loved? Can I love? Uh, do I feel like I belong and that I can also be myself? Uh, do I feel like I can make my own choices and face my own consequences? And in any place that the, the unconscious feels that one of these rights are not met creates a wounding experience. It creates a wounding experience. Now, this wounding experience, it's not, uh, it's not about comparison. Pain is pain. And the, the, somebody who's experiencing pain because they, they don't have enough uh, food to eat and they, they, uh, you know, they are in a really tough part of the world that's going through war experiences pain. And somebody who has enough food to eat but can never get the attention of their father because their father's a workaholic also experiences pain. The, the biggest, it's, it's the same pain. The, whatever the biggest pain that the individual has experienced is the biggest pain that that individual has experienced. Does that make sense? The, the, the individual doesn't know what anyone else's pain is. 
I always have this amazing um, experience at seminars when I have people stand up and they share, you know, what their biggest challenge was, you know, in their life. And then you see someone else shaking their head in disbelief going, that's not even a big deal. Like that's nothing compared to mine. And, and the point is, is, is it probably isn't anything compared to theirs, um, but it's still the biggest pain. It's still the same wounding experience. Does that make sense? It's just wounding means to not have it the way you want it. So we're asking, how is it? Do I have the right to exist and have my needs met? You know, my needs, like, am I validated? Am I seen? Uh, you know, do I have enough food and water and shelter and warmth and, and care? And it could just be that, you know, that, that, that you're the fourth child and the third child ended, had a disability. And so the parents go, well, you're healthy. We need to focus on this kid. And so it's, it's sometimes it's not even that, the, that there's anything wrong. It's just how it is. Can I just get a yes if that makes sense? You're like, it's just, it's just how it is. You know, one thing I always do when I work with people is I ask them, I say, how old were your parents when you were two or three or four? And they look at me like, oh, they were 21 or 25 or 26. And I'm like, yeah, they were just two 25-year-olds trying to figure out, uh, figure out the world, right? And, and so we have these, these rights. And, uh, and if they're not met, it, it, it hurts. It hurts. Uh, Fenella, I see your message. I'm not sure why you're not seeing us. So maybe this is meant to be an audio session for you. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll get you the recording. Uh, that's the best I think we can do right now. So the unconscious asks, well, why do I hurt? And, and here's something that's really important. Hurting is unacceptable to the unconscious. It's unacceptable. The unconscious doesn't want pain. So it won't accept it. So what it does, the only thing it knows to do is it makes up a belief about why the pain must be there. It can't just be there. There must be a reason. And since the, the unconscious looks to others and notice that others are getting things different, the unconscious assumes that it's personal. This belief creates an agenda to try to get away from whatever that pain is. Now that pain could just be, you know, not being seen. The pain could also be that you're only ever validated when you achieve, or the pain could be you're not safe, okay? And it's really important to get this, is that the unconscious is sitting in the background and it is, is there with this agenda to try to avoid this wounding experience. The problem is, is that the unconscious gets so caught up in the wounding experience that it just keeps on recreating the same experience over and over and over and over and over again. And the same experience might be an experience of powerlessness or an experience of being a victim or a, a, an experience of being a perpetrator or perpetrated on or being a nobody or whatever, right? But that experience, they can find that experience anywhere. And uh, it's very important to understand that one of the biggest ways uh, that the unconscious experiences uh, pain is, is this idea that in order to get its needs met and uh, to make sure it has everything, it needs to have the love uh, of the family. It needs to be taken care of because of the family. So the nearly, uh, you know, the top thing that the unconscious wants to do is it wants to make sure that it belongs to the family. Okay. Now the problem is, is the way that it chooses to belong to the family is to share the same experience as the family, to be in rapport with that experience. Now it doesn't actually make sense, right? If you see someone else suffering, choosing to suffer as well, just doubled the suffering, right? Like it doesn't make sense. But also, if if you grow up in a family that is angry and you're happy, well, you're not like them. And that's scary. If you grow up in a family that's in scarcity and you you go choose to be in abundance and you're not like them. Does that make sense? So so there's two, there's two parts of this. One, 
yes, you do just double the negative, but, but you, you are like them. So at least you know who you are. There's a great saying in a family of thieves, the, the one that doesn't steal feels guilty. The feeling of guilt is the opposite of innocence. So when you feel innocent, you are being like you are like your family. You feel guilty if you were to do something opposite. That is why many people, if they are to have the financial abundance uh, opposite of their family, they feel guilty a bit about it. They want to give it away. Very interesting. So today we've got a, a really nice, uh, you know, really nice experience that we're going to take ourselves through uh, to just sort of unplug a bit from all of this. OK, so uh, that, that's that's really important. So you and your family are, are very uh, entangled, uh, especially with your parents. And, and even if you were adopted on a cellular level, you are still energetically uh, entangled with, with that, is, that is your family. There are instructions that were given to you and your being before you were even born. And then uh, there are also instructions of who you grew up around. So those of us that um, didn't grow up with our biological family, we actually have two sets of instructions. We have the sets of instructions of, that were given to us uh, in the super conscious of how to belong, uh, you know, hereditary conditions, you know, uh, looks, all of these things, and then also uh, those that we grew up around. Yeah. So, so a deep level. Your super conscious will know which one to work with with on this. So I'm going to go, I'm going to jump right into it here, and uh, we're going to have some, some fun. Um, with this. So the first question I have uh, for you today, so we can really start to uncover and unplug for this, is, um, is this question here. What do you want to create but haven't? What do you want to create but haven't? Teen, I'm just sending you the questions in, um, in Slack. So what do you want to create but haven't? I'm just, uh, it's a really, a really, 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 yeah. Good question. Hey, Diamond. Nice to see that you're here. What do you want to create but haven't? Awesome. Just letting everyone time to just make their decision of what we're what we're working on with that. Okay. So let's say, um, what do you want to create but haven't? Let's say, uh, you know, your answer is financial abundance, more money than I can spend, right? Okay. So let, as an example, the next question is: So what's the problem? So what's what's the problem? So yeah, so what's what's the problem? So I haven't created that, so what's the problem? And just notice what pops into your brain. What's the problem? I what like just just really plainly ask yourself, so what's the problem? I don't know how, I'm not smart enough, stuck, blah, blah, blah. Wow. I love that, Greg. Yeah, so what's what's the problem? So what's the problem with that? You know, so what do you want to create but haven't? And what so what's the problem with that? Like what what's it, why haven't you done it? What's why haven't you got it? Yeah. So what do you think about the problem? What do you think about it? 
Well, so I think so. The problem. So this is what I, what I create, but have it. This is the problem. What do I think about? I think that it's hard, or I think that I need to check. What do I think? What do I think about the problem? I think problems shouldn't exist, or I think, you know, I think uh, it's no big deal. I think that it's exhausting. What do I think? So the next is, is uh, how do you feel about the problem? How do you feel? So do you feel confused, upset? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel emotional? How do you feel about it? Yeah. Cool. And it's just nice to just get this out because sometimes we can go around in our heads so often, around and around. And it's just like, this is what I want to create, but haven't. This is what, this is the problem. This is what I think about. This is how I feel. That's it. And just, and just let it, just let it out. Yeah. Okay. You guys are doing great. Just letting everyone have a moment. So, so what what is it that you want to create but haven't? Um, team, could we just give a little summary of the question so far in the in the chat? So, or what do you want to create but haven't? What is the problem? What do you think about the problem? What do you feel about the problem? Yeah. Okay. So because of this, so because of all this, how do you define yourself? So because of this, how do you define yourself as a striver, struggler, um, frustrated? How do you define yourself? So I define myself. So out of all the things I so definition. So when you when you go into high definition, it is it is what it is that you're focusing on. So it, because of all this, how do you define yourself? Yeah, nice. Interesting. Okay, how do you define others? How do you define others? So I define myself as this, I define others as what? Powerful, uh, they have it all, easy or stupid. I define others as stupid. Many times we define others as needing our help or broken or powerless. How do we define others, you know, ignorant? How do you define others? So, so in relating to this, how do you define others? Others are what? And just notice what pops into your mind, right? I define myself as this and I define others as what? Yeah. So how do you define the world? So I define myself as this, as someone to, that's a savior. I define myself as a hero. I define others as needing a hero. And I define the world as, uh, as broken. How do you define the world? You know, I define myself as a, as a warrior. I define others as warriors and the world as a battleground. 
what is it? And so how do you define the world? You know, confusing to find the world is full of opportunity that goes to everyone else. So to find the world is hard. I define the world as what? It's scary. Yeah. How do you define the world? Interesting. So just, you know, it's just really interesting to notice um, how you're creating your reality. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Okay, so we'll get into a bit of change work here, but it's just nice. So, you know, there's something that you'd like to create, but haven't, and there's a reason why you haven't created it. And it's, it's, you know, it could be that it's just timing, could be lots of things, and we don't know, but it's really fascinating just to examine uh, our, our definitions, okay? So everything that we've shared up till now, so what you want to create, what the problem is, you know, what you think about it, how you feel, how you define yourself, others in the world. So all of this, what meaning do you give all of this? What meaning do you give it? So all of this means what? So what meaning? I'll, I'll share something in a, in a second about that. But what, what does all of this mean to you? What is the meaning that you give all of this? And so what does all of this mean? Just just ask her, what does it mean? So this means what? What this means that, all of this means that, what does it mean? And what does that mean? Just ask yourself that question just a couple times. So Joanne and Bosha and Mary, and what does that mean? Yeah, nice, Jeff. What does it all mean? Oh, I don't know what's happened to my notes here, team. I was just looking at what got sent to you. Just sit with that. What does it mean for just a second? I'm just getting um, team, my support staff, the correct notes here. You see that in um, Slack team? Okay. So now we're going to get into a bit of change work, but I hope that that uh, allowed you to just, you know, just get a, a little bit of, out on paper or, or in the chat box, just a little bit out. See, we have a lot sitting in our unconscious and through, through some very well-designed questions, we can just bring it forward, okay? So I would love you all please uh, to think of an early childhood experience that relates to all of this. And just notice what comes to you, an early childhood experience about 
you choosing to take on the world this way or you choosing to feel powerless. And, and, and a lot of us here have come up with some positive things because none of these questions uh, necessarily have to be negative. Many of us have come up with negative, but just, just for a moment, just notice that the questions are non-loaded. So what is an early childhood experience that relates to all this? Just let me know when you've got one. What is an early childhood experience that relates to all of this, to this feeling? It doesn't have to be obvious. It's just when you ask yourself, what is an early childhood experience that relates to this feeling, to this meaning, to this definition? Yeah, interesting, Janet. Interesting. And, and just uh, and just one. It doesn't it doesn't matter. But just think of it. Just think of an early child uh, childhood age and experience. So, so what are you experiencing back then? Okay. So just what are you, what are you experiencing? Is it being told off by a family member? Is it being abandoned? Is it you know getting lost at the supermarket? You know. What are you experiencing? Is it criticism? What are you experiencing? Is it this belief that you can change the world? Is it empowering? You know, is it is it motivating? Is it a, you know, for me, it was looking at my parents and going, you know what, I'm going to go out there and create something because because you guys aren't. What is it? Very interesting. So you might decide some positive things, you might decide some negative things, but you just decided, you just decided. And, um, you know, it's, it's just important to acknowledge. So what are your assumptions? So back then, what are you assuming is true? Are you assuming that there's something you must fix, you must rely on yourself, that people are inherently, what are you assuming? that what are you assuming? So if this is what you're deciding, if you were to decide that, what is the assumption? Uh, what, are you what are you assuming? So I'm assuming, I'm assuming something. What is that? And so with that assumption and that decision, where did you place the power? Now, the obvious answer is outside of myself, right? So, so other than just outside, where are you putting the power in other people's opinions, in, in, the, in the fact that no one can look after you? Where are you placing the power? You'll know where the power is um, getting placed based on your actions. Behavior is the highest form of communication. So where do you place the power? On avoidance, on doing nothing, on procrastinating, on um, learning, on making friends, on pleasing people. Where do you put the power? What is it that you do? So if you decide that your experience, where do you put the power? On being really intelligent or smart or successful. I put the power in trying to be perfect. I put the power in what other people think. I put the power, where do I put the power? In being a good boy or girl, put being, being where is the power? On doing nothing. What's the point of having if it gets taken away? Where do you put the power? And, and if, you, if you put the power there, what is the inevitable end result? Okay. What is the inevitable end result of putting the power there? Yeah, cool. So, so what we can see, we're going we're gonna to close our eyes and do a really, really beautiful exercise now. But you, you, can, you can see what is called uh, an isomorphic experience playing out in your life. Isomorphic, meaning it's the same experience, but with different characters consistently throughout your life. You see? The same experience, different characters. If, if you had a critical mother, then, you know, you find a critical spouse or you, 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 you internalize it and are just completely critical of yourself, right? Can I just get some feedback? How many of us uh, are seeing an isomorphic experience play out in our life? Like the same, the same structure of this, of this decision and this assumption just playing out. 
Some, some are really good, some we would choose to, to not do. And, and so because of, because of this, this is a very important thing to understand. In order for our unconscious to know how to be in the world, it has to figure out and make up assumptions. And it, it's still mind boggling to me how the creative spirit comes into the world and finds its decisions, right? You know, I was, I was chatting with an amazing lady the other day uh, who had an experience at age three of being laughed at in front of an audience. And, and she made the decision that, you know, being in front of others is scary. Well, someone else might have made a decision that that entertaining an audience is a good thing. So it's still perplexing to me how our consciousness makes decisions. And I wonder if we do come pre-programmed to create scenarios to, 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 to create certain decisions, but uh, it, it's, it's too hard to try to figure out. All that I know for certain is that that's the decision we've made. I don't know how we come to it at age three or four or six or seven, right? I don't know. I don't know how we come to it. I just know that we come to it. And I also know that then as soon as that captures our conscious focus, we consistently repeat it again and again and again and again and again. Is it true? We consistently repeat it. And I also know uh, what is true is that we can let it go. We do not have to keep on living in that focus. And I want you to think about your focus like a, a gravitational force field. It just holds those things in place. And if something was to leave, it finds something else to come in to create that same experience. Because you are, you know, a quantum being, you know, creating your world. And so if you want it to be a different way, we need to go back to the original uh, moment of, of creating this structure, this experience, and we need to restructure it. See, you're not broken, you're a creative energy. Come into this world and got formed, picked up some beliefs, and then just keep recreating that. Awesome. So I've got a nice, a nice exercise here. This exercise is actually about returning the power to yourself and the power to everybody else and and realizing that um that everybody is a super conscious creator and everybody had the same uh the same situation go on in their life and they had agendas created and it's actually not who they are uh, at the base. Even, even those who have had, you know, chosen to do some really terrible things to us at the base, uh, right at the beginning were just, just a pure consciousness that had experiences. And it does no good to continually replay an experience that is really not enjoyable. It does no good to continually replay it again and again and again and again and again just because it happened to you right just because a bad thing happened to you replaying that experience for a lifetime doesn't help that bad thing the bad thing happened there was a uh, uh a speaker one time and i was sitting in the audience and he and he said he said it's never too late to have a happy childhood and, and i laughed out loud because i thought it was a joke but every and everyone kind of looked at me and the and the speaker like looked at me strange because because he was actually trying to tell this audience that you could somehow have a happy childhood if you hadn't. And I actually had a pretty happy childhood, to be honest with you. But um, the funny thing was is is that he was trying to sell this idea that you could somehow fix it. And so, well, actually, no. Um, unfortunately, 
uh, what's happened has happened in this in this uh, experience. True, it's happened. What he was trying to say, uh, and is that you don't have to keep on dragging it with you. Bad things can happen to good people, and uh, you're allowed to just uh, let it go. Uh, 